All right, Malachi chapter two, verse one. And it says, and now, O priests, so we're talking to the priests, mm. this command is for you. Mm. Yeah. So God speaks to the leadership first because the truth is that everything rises and everything falls through leadership. Right. This is yeah. true in yeah. any organization. This is true in a school, in a business. This is true in a home. Yeah. This is true in a home. Yeah. Everything rises or falls mm -hmm. because of leadership. Right. Yeah. And this has been a conviction that has uh, dwelled in my life for a long time, ever since I was a child. Mm -hmm. Parents who are leaders can determine so much for their children. Yeah. So in my childhood, I had a mother and a father that determined a lot for me. Mm. Like, let me give you some examples. For me, my mom, she determined that I would have music lessons even though I did not want them. <laughs> and I remember that she uh, enrolled me into um, guitar lessons and guitar lessons are difficult because playing guitar is not natural to you. Yeah. Yeah. So you have to be shaped into something that's not natural to you and it's not easy to you. And on top of that, the formation hurts. Mm -hmm. Um, your wrists begin to hurt. You get blisters in your fingers. Um, you're yeah. doing things with your hands that are not natural to you. Yeah. Yeah. It's something that has to be taught, shaped. And so when every time I would go on a Wednesday night, you know, I'd first, it started with getting bribed with by McDonald's after and I'd be like, okay. <laughs> but, you know, McDonald's soon became not enough. And so she started pushing um, and saying, you're going to have to learn how to play guitar. And I would cry and I would call my grandma. I'd be like, grandma, come spank my mom. <laughs> She's taking me to guitar lessons and I don't want to do it and, and, you know, it couldn't work. So I'd end up every Wednesday having a crying session for about an hour and a half before we got, before we went. And it was difficult for me, but she made me and she took a decision for me as a child. Yeah. Another thing was um, going to church rehearsals for the worship team was something that was difficult for me as well when I was younger. So this was when I was about 11 years old mm -hmm. because... Um, in our church, we had very good musicians yeah. that were very advanced. Mm -hmm. And since I had grown up a little bit, you know, on the marginalized side at school, I was bullied. I was a very insecure young man, little kid, actually, not young man. I was a very insecure little kid. So the worship team at my old church was filled with a lot of people in their 20s. I was 11 years old and they were really good at what yeah. they did. Mm -hmm. So going in there and playing drums when we had a lot of good musicians was such an intimidating thing for me to do. Mm -hmm. That I remember one day after coming from McDonald's, <laughs> I was like, you know what? No, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. And she's like, you have to go. Wow. And she would make me go. And it was so frightening for me to go because all the anxiety, all of the insecurities, all of the fear of not measuring up before a group of people that were better than me was something that was a fear that was becoming a hindrance to do what I was supposed to do that was wow. going to serve me today. Wow. But because I was a kid, I was a child, I was immature, I didn't know how to listen. Mm -hmm. It was difficult for me and I needed that extra push. I needed a leader to lead me, not where I wanted to be, but where I ought to be. Wow. I remember that I felt intimidated, but I was led to go. Mm -hmm. um, another thing that my mother and my father always taught us was they shaped the priority of church. And that was a very difficult one for me because when we were kids, um, all the kids in church would go play in the playground mm -hmm. or they would go play in the parking lot during the church experience or they'd go to the back and play in the back. And guess who was not allowed to go play in the parking lot at the playground and at the back of the church? Guess who wasn't allowed? Guess. None other than your boy. <laughs> me. Me. I wasn't allowed. I would cry. And people would like look at me from like the other side of the church building and be like, oh, the Holy Spirit's touching him. No, it wasn't the Holy Spirit of God touching me. It was just that my mom had me there. And when I would throw a hissy fit, she'd be like, let's go to the washroom. <laughs> and you know, I would happen a nice, holy, righteous pinch to shut me up and say, you're going to come to church not to play with children. You're going to come to church not to do your homework. You're going to come to church not to sit in the back. You're going to come to church not to play in the parking lot. You're going to come to church to worship the Lord. Wow. And she made these decisions for me as a leader that while I was a child, I had no clue mm -hmm. how much they were going to impact me. Yeah. Yeah. How much they impacted me to be the man 
that I am today, how much they were going to impact me to build the church that God has entrusted into my hands, how much it was going to impact me to set these priorities, not only in my children when I have some, but in our church and in the leadership of our church. Projects, sports, work, tiredness, hangouts, or even family hangouts were never an excuse to not go to church and worship God by giving him the time that was appointed to him. This was something that was decided for me because that's what leaders do. There are moments where leaders need to ask and take other people's opinions into consideration. As a matter of fact, it's okay to take people's um, opinions into consideration all the time. That's not a problem. But there are moments where leaders need to understand that they have to make decisions Mm -hmm. and use the authority that has been given to them. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you wouldn't be a leader and we wouldn't need leaders. And you must take this position of responsibility to make certain decisions Mm -hmm. for the good of those that are under your care. And so God says, and now, O priest, this command is for you. Verse 2, if you will not listen... If you want any relationship in your life to be healthy, it requires that both sides communicate and listen. Mm -hmm. And because God's a loving God, he wants a healthy relationship with us, but that requires for us to learn how to, say it with me, listen. listen. And that's what he's saying here. If you will not listen, if you will not take it to heart to give honor to my name, says the Lord of hosts, That's an interesting nickname, by the way, Lord of hosts. Then I will send the curse upon you and I will curse your blessings. Indeed, I have already cursed them because you do not take my warning to heart. So here we can tell by God's language, by the way, he's using strong language right now and it's going to get stronger in verse three. And this also tells us that it's okay to use strong language. Yeah. 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 Not all the time, because God never uses strong language all the time, but he does use it sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But we can go to two extremes where we want to use it all the time or where we never want to use strong language. <laughs> True. But sometimes it's needed, specifically when we have to lead and the people are not wanting mm. yeah. to be humble and mm. take to heart what God is saying. Yeah. But here, through this language, we're starting to recognize how important it is to learn how to listen Mm -hmm. to God. But the problem is our generation today is so strong at communication. Mm -hmm. We're good with blogs. We're strong in vlogs. Mm -hmm. We like creative videos and creative films where we're communicating. We love phone calls. We love FaceTiming. Mm -hmm. We're so great at social media. We're always communicating out, but when it comes to listening, we don't want to do it. We're so passionate about communicating how we see it, how we feel it, how we want it, how we like it, how we don't like it. But when it comes to listening, we don't want to do it. In education, we even have degrees on speech, but you will never hear about a degree on listening. The world is communicating information, but hardly anyone wants to listen. And God is saying, this is a problem. To listen yeah. is to honor. Wow. Wow. And this is the title of today's message. Honor thy word. Wow. We must be people that have to understand how much of a priority it is for God. Mm-hmm. For us to learn to listen. Yes. Yeah. So what is God saying to you? How many of you? Has God communicated something to you or instructed something to you in this season? How many of you is God speaking something to you where he's instructed something to you? Are you listening to it or are you just hearing it? Because to listen means to honor. And I believe that God has communicated some things to some of you if not to all of you listening right now. So what is God saying to you? What instructions has he been speaking to you? Are you listening? 
or are you just hearing him? See, when God speaks, you have a decision. You can take it to heart or you can harden your heart. And God uses this beautiful name for himself called the Lord of hosts. And the Lord of hosts means the God who rules over a heavenly realm. These, this means angels and demons. Before we were created, God created spiritual beings called angels. God's angels were God's staff. They were supposed to listen to what he said, honor it, and obey it. But some of those angels, though, decided only to hear what he would say, but not listen to what he would say. And instead of taking his words to heart, they hardened their heart. And these, my friends, are what we call demons. So here's the thing. When God speaks to us, we have two choices. The angelic or the demonic. Wow. It's that important. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's that big. Mm -hmm. It's so important that we don't see it this way because we see it as, oh, God understands. But God is saying, hey, you're either trafficking in the angelic or you're going to be trafficking in the demonic. Hey. Demons are fallen angels who were once part of God's staff. Mm -hmm. yeah. But these spiritual beings only heard what God said they did not take it to heart, so they ended up not obeying, and this is why they're now called demons. They're rebels. They're fallen angels. They hardened their heart. So here's the thing. When God speaks to us, what are you choosing? The angelic or the demonic? The most important thing when it comes to your honor for God hinges on this one thing. Will you listen and obey? Will you listen and obey him when you hear him? Or will you harden your heart? Wow. God says, listen. Yeah. And he's saying, take it to heart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Listen. Take it to heart. Mm -hmm. And obey it. Yes. Yeah. So how does God speak? Well, we'll have to review what we learned a couple of months ago. The primary number one way that God speaks is through scripture. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. When you want to hear from God, the first place you should go to is the word of God. Someone shout amen. Yes. amen. We believe the scripture is our highest court of authority because God will never contradict his word. Yeah. Mm -hmm. God will never contradict his word. That's right. His highest court of authority is his word. Yeah. This is like all the government courts that we have in a province or in a country. The highest court is the Supreme, Supreme Court. court. Yes. Once the Supreme Court says and decides, there's no appealing it. It's what it is and yeah. you can't change it. The word of God, scripture, is that supreme court in our lives. Once God says it, you can't appeal it. You can't change it. You can't twist it. It is what it is. We believe that the scripture is our highest court of authority. And when you're learning to hear God, God's word will separate and differentiate between your emotion and God's word. Between your tendencies and God's word. Or between your preferences and God's word. It's so easy to lean towards our desires, our culture, our traditions, our feelings, and then we call it God. It is so easy to lean towards our tendencies, our desires, our wants, our feelings. And then call it, this was God. This was God's word for me. And so this is why getting into God's word is so important. Because it corrects us from leaning onto our own understanding while calling it God's voice. It separates us from our wants and his word. Yeah. Yeah. If you feel that God is giving you an impression or the Holy Spirit is speaking to you, test it with God's word. Because we have to stop calling our feelings, our tendencies, and our desires God's word. Yeah. This is particularly true when it comes to new believing Christians mm. yeah. or new converts or new followers of Jesus. Mm. They hear seasoned Christians speaking, saying, you know, God spoke to me. And you have no idea that this Christian has been a Christian for about like 20 something years. Mm -hmm. And you just came in 20 days ago. <laughs> and because you hear them saying, now you start adopting the same language from a 20 year old seasoned Christian. You're only 20 days in. And now you're starting to call your, your emotions, your feelings, your tendencies, your wants, your desires, God's voice speaking to you. And I want to tell you, you need to be careful. Yeah, that's right. yeah. 
And I want to say this, that a lot of you need to stop saying God said, uh-huh. or God told me. This was punishable by death back in the Old Testament. Not that God will kill you today. <laughs> God, God, God already took all those punishments on the cross through Jesus Christ. But the truth is this, that there must be so much honor in God's word that we can't just ignore God's word and say, I don't want to hear it. Mm-hmm. But we must also not call something that is not the word of God, the word of God. Yeah, that's right. All of you that want to hear God's word, you know where you need to start? The scriptures. Right. It's so funny that we have a lot of people saying, God told me, but you never open your Bible. And my question to young Christians or even old Christians that don't read the word of God that are fruitless in their life. My question to you is, how do you know it's God if you don't ever open your word? A lot of people don't read the Bible. They did a stat thing, like a statistic thing. And they they were saying that most pastors don't pray or read the word. And the only time they open up the book is when they're about to preach. They're not familiar with the word of God. And that's why you see a lot of leaders taking decisions that maybe are not as effective or fruitful. This is why you see a lot of people moving from one city to the other without any fruitfulness. And what they have is a pattern and they call that pattern God's voice. This is why you see a lot of girls jumping from guy to guy. This is why you'll see a lot of guys jumping from girl to girl. And it's because they keep thinking that their desires and their hormones, they're just horny. They keep calling that God. But the problem is that they don't know God because they don't know God's word. So I want to challenge all of you little premature little children of God. Stop saying that it's God when you just gave your life to Christ three months ago, four months ago. I think it takes a lot of courage to say God told me so. Even I just have recently started telling people in the church, God has spoken to me. It's very hard for me to say God has spoken to me unless I know it's God. Mm. It's taken me years to get to where I am. Years of prayer, years of trial and error, years of mistake after mistake, years of testing, years of formation, years of grooming, years of doing. Mm. And it's just been recent that I actually say, hey, I know God spoke to me. Back in the day, I would say I feel like God because I was very keen on not saying God spoke when I wasn't too sure. Mm -hmm. But nowadays we have, you know, little fetuses going, God spoke to me. (laughs) And it's like, but you don't even read. You haven't opened up. You don't. As a matter of fact, some of you don't even own Bibles. And, and, And you're saying that you can hear God's voice. How can you hear God's voice if you don't know his word? Mm -hmm. The first step to hearing what God has to say to you starts with scripture. Not your feelings, bro. Not your experiences. I don't care if you have a gift of being very spiritual. But if you don't know God's word, you will not recognize God's voice. Part of honoring God's word is reading his scripture. Are you honoring thy word? Mm -hmm. So how do we know? When it's God. Well, we have to test it through scripture. If you you feel that God is giving you an impression or that his Holy Spirit is speaking to you, Mm -hmm. test it. Say it with me. Test it. it. Say it again. Test it. Test it it with his word. Because we have to stop calling our feelings. Like, honestly. Uh We have, like, like, honestly. Uh We have to stop Uh calling our feelings. God's voice. A lot of people go like, we're going to pray to see if God wants me and you to date. (laughs) And they pray. Can you believe this, guys? They actually pray. (laughs) But they never wait to hear God. And they make a decision. Guess how they made the decision? Not by what God said, because they haven't heard him yet. Mm -hmm. They make the decision by their feelings. And you know how I know this? Because I've made that mistake myself. (laughs) I called it God and it wasn't God. It was my heart. (laughs) Called it God and it wasn't God. It was my thinking. It was my feelings. Mm. So test it with God's word because we have to stop calling our tendencies, our desires, God's voice. Don't cheat yourself. Mm -hmm. Have you seen DJ Khaled? (laughs) Congratulations. (laughs) You, you played yourself. We don't want to do that, man. And I think that a lot of us, because we don't get into God's word, we keep playing ourselves. Yeah. 
Yeah. Number two, how do we know that God speaks? Through his wise counsel. Yeah. Mm. This is people that know the Lord. Mm -hmm. They know the word. Mm -hmm. And they know you. Yeah. Wow. They know your tendencies. Mm -hmm. They know your craziness. Mm -hmm. They know your hormone levels. <laughs> <laughs> they know your patterns yeah. Yeah. of liking 15 people in three days. Oh. They know it all. They know it all. And you literally sometimes get convinced that you're in love. But they know that it's just a pattern and you're not really in love. Godly wise counsel is people that know God. They know the word of God and yeah. they know you. There are times where we're stuck and we need wise counsel. Wow. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so when you're stuck, do you go to wise counsel or do you stay quiet? Hmm. Are you too scared to show weakness? Mm -hmm. Do you have this weird, messed up mindset that asking for help is a bad thing? Mm. Anytime that I have to make a decision in my life, I go to wise counsel. I go to my leaders and ask for their opinions just a couple of, uh, like about like a month or two months ago, a month and a half ago, two months ago, I wanted to have a meeting and I was going to make a meeting happen. And I told my leaders, here's the meeting that I want to call. Here are the people that I want to call into the meeting. Here are the reasons why. And here's my angle. And here's what they said. Wait a minute, pastor. But what did God speak to you? Mm -hmm. Didn't God speak to you like four weeks ago that you weren't going to have to fight in this battle? Wow. Mm -hmm. wow. Yeah. And that was a memorable moment for me. Mm -hmm. Because even though there is spiritual maturity in us, mm -hmm. sometimes when we're in a problem or we're in a mess, we don't have the bird's eye angle. That's true. Yeah. And that's why God speaks about having wise counsel in our life. Mm -hmm. And there's countless of verses in the scriptures that have to do with us asking for wise counsel before we make a decision. Mm -hmm. Before I make a decision, I go to my leaders yeah. who are godly elders in the church. And by the, by the way, the word elder doesn't mean old. Because <laughs> some of you are like, hey, most of the people in our church are not old. Does that mean that we don't have the elders? No, man. You have to, you have to like Joe Biden says, come on, man. <laughs> you, <laughs> I went there. You have, to, you have to understand scripture and understand how to interpret it. The English language is a little bit more limited than yeah. the original languages yeah. that the scriptures were written. Elders doesn't mean old people. Everybody got it? Yeah. Yeah. But we do have older people that are way older than me, more advanced than I am, that are overseers over our church. Mm -hmm. We're talking about pastors with campuses all over the world yeah. that are so ahead. They have healthy marriages, healthy yes. churches. Yeah. And we go to them yeah. for counsel, yeah. wise counsel, and be like, hey, how do we do this? We've never been here before. Um, just recently I had to talk to some of the people that oversee our church. And I said, we're sp we, like, this was during my sabbatical and we, we, we split for five. And, and I'm like, I've never done five campuses. Like, tell me all the ins and outs. What do I have to do when it comes to choosing the right campus directors? Cause we're calling them campus directors now, not campus pastors. Yeah. What I do to, and, and, and they spoke vision. They spoke yeah. wisdom. Wow. Mm -hmm. They spoke things that I had never thought of mm -hmm. that I would have never seen because I haven't been there, but they have wow. wise yeah. counsel. Yeah. Yeah. Even though we are spiritually mature, mm -hmm. we are designed to have wise counsel. Mm -hmm. And the yeah. third way that God speaks is through peace. Yeah. Yeah. We all know this one. Yeah. Peace means that you feel good and you have rest in your soul, mm -hmm. yeah. even if naturally speaking or rationally speaking, it doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes we're doing, like in, an, in another way, if we flip that, um, we flip the language on it, sometimes we will do things that make sense, but there's no peace. Wow. Mm -hmm. And you know that you're doing the right thing, rationally speaking, humanly speaking, mm -hmm. intellectually speaking. You're doing the right thing. Yeah. But then there's something inside of you that says there's, 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 there's no peace inside my heart. Mm -hmm. and, and that is a sign that God may be speaking to you. Yeah. So the three primary ways, and there are more, but we're just choosing three, are scripture, wise counsel, and peace. Mm -hmm. Now, why don't we listen? <laughs> Or why don't we listen? That's a good question. God is saying, listen. Yeah. But the main question here is, why don't we listen? Yeah. Well, I got a couple of reasons why I think we don't listen. Number yeah. one, it's because you're probably distracted. Oh. Sometimes we don't listen because we're distracted, meaning that we're not focused. Uh -huh. Like, God could be constantly speaking to you and pouring his heart out to you, but you don't listen because you're distracted. 
And how many of you know that that distraction is possibly your phone right now? Like right now that I'm preaching, like right now I'm on your screen at home. You're listening to this and you probably, you probably just started looking up right now. I got, got your attention. But the word of God is being spoken right now. And instead of being focused and instead of paying attention, you're scrolling. And you're scrolling. And you're scrolling without purpose. You're just scrolling. You're distracted. Or sometimes for all of you overachievers, God is trying to speak to you. And he's trying to bless you. And he's trying to give you direction. (laughs) But guess what? You could not stay still. You just had to get up the moment that God was about to speak to you. And you had to go do something so that you can feel better about yourself. And you became distracted. You became distracted. You couldn't sit still and be still that knowing that he's God. God's always speaking. God's always communicating. Our problem is that sometimes we're not in position to listen. Number two, you're probably ignoring. This is when you choose to say, I know what God's going to say. <laughs> and so, because you know what God's going to say, you choose to ignore it. Sometimes we don't call our godly counsel, even though we're drowning to death. Because you say to yourself, I know what they're going to say. And I just don't want to hear it. So you choose to ignore it. How many times have you been in moments where you're really like, falling to pieces, you're going through circumstances that are not easy and they're very difficult. And sometimes these circumstances or these problems or consequences, they're uh, a result of your bad decision making. Mm. Okay. Mm. And you know that you can call your godly counsel or people that are in a position of godliness and that they could help you. They're able to help you in a godly way. That's what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. But you refuse to call them. Because you already know what they're going to say to you. Mm -hmm. And you choose not to hear it. Mm -hmm. These are moments where we choose not to listen. Mm -hmm. Because we choose to take the ignoring option. Mm -hmm. The the third one is we're interrogating. Why don't we listen? Because we're interrogating instead of listening. (laughs) This is when God shows up and says, I love you, but I want to address some things in your life. And then we go, but how come you didn't hear? (laughs) And how come you didn't there? And why didn't you over here? And why didn't you over there? And you could have, and why? Oh my God. And what do we do? We reverse the roles and we begin to interrogate instead of listen. Dang. We, 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 we switch roles and, 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 and we become God and God becomes us. Mm-hmm. And we get into the position where we start asking, we start interrogating, kind of like the people of Malachi, where they're actually making accusations through interrogation. Ooh. We can do this sometimes too, and this impedes us from listening. Or we're rationalizing. What does that mean? This is when you appreciate God's word, and you love it, and you amen it. But you think that you're the exception. And you think that what he's saying to you doesn't apply to you. For example, couples that aren't married who argue, but if we love each other, then we're okay to have sex. Typically, their line of thinking goes like this. We're married in our hearts. And God is saying, no, Mm -hmm. no, Mm -hmm. you're not listening, Mm -hmm. but we're trying to be progressive. God's saying, no, Mm -hmm. no, 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 don't, don't get it twisted. Mm -hmm. My word's eternal. Progressive is so far behind eternity. (laughs) Eternal so more ahead. In other words, just to make it a little bit funny for you to understand and a little bit easier for you to swallow, eternal is more progressive than progressive. Because it's so much further ahead. It's timeless. You can't submit what is eternal under time because it exists outside of time. That's like trying to fit a whole city inside a laptop. (laughs) You can't do that, bro. Because even though we see a lot inside of a laptop, it's not big enough. Yeah, that's right. For what we see in it to be put in it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you're catching what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. You can't submit the word of God to a finite, mm-hmm. human, limited way of thinking. Yeah. Yeah. God is eternal. He's far beyond what you and I could ever think of or imagine. That's right. That's right. Mm-hmm. 
And so sometimes we have Christians or followers of Christ that they rationalize and they think, I love God's word, but you know, um, I'm the exception. <laughs> I can sleep with my girlfriend. I can sleep with my boyfriend and it's okay. And God is saying, no, wow. yeah. no, because sleeping with your boyfriend or your girlfriend, whether if you're married in your hearts is a sin. Mm-hmm. It's a sin. Yeah. And how do I know that? Not because of my feelings. Mm-hmm. How do I know that? Not because of my opinion. Right. How do I know that? Not because of my preference. Mm-hmm. Believe me, if it was up to me, and if it was my preference, I'd be like, hey, y'all married in my eyes and your hearts? Go for it. <laughs> Let's reproduce in Jesus' name. Let's grow the church. Yes, that's what I would do. But this is not based off my preference yeah. or my desires yeah. or my wants uh-huh. or my opinions yeah. or me trying to be progressive. Love. You know, where, where, when, when I tell you that having sex before marriage is in, do you know where this comes from? It comes from a place of higher authority. That's, yes. That's right. yeah. That place is God's word. Amen. Amen. All right. So are you listening? Number five, cherry picking. You're not listening because you're cherry picking. This one's my favorite. This is when you have selective hearing. (laughs) And you only choose to hear and listen to the parts of God's word that are most convenient and most comfortable to you. All of this is eventually disobeying. You don't take what God says to heart and instead you harden your heart. You pick the parts that you like, bro. You take the parts that are most convenient to you, sis. Mm -hmm. And so no wonder you're not listening. No wonder you're far. No wonder you keep on repeating the same patterns. Mm -hmm. No wonder you haven't experienced freedom yet. Mm. No wonder you can't walk into power that comes from the gospel. Wow. No wonder. Hmm. It's simple. God speaks. Mm-hmm. We listen. Yeah. Take it to heart. Mm-hmm. We obey. Yeah. Yeah. And then God can bless that. That's right. That's right. But when God speaks and you cherry pick mm-hmm. and you only take what you want, like Saul, King Saul, yeah. you should read that story. He had good intentions, good feelings. Mm-hmm. But he cherry picked God's instruction. Yeah. God told him to accomplish a mission. He only accomplished the parts that he liked and didn't want. And so what, what ended up happening? He ended up losing his blessing. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And a lot of us sometimes, we're hearing God. We do the parts that we like or that are comfortable to us. Yeah. Man, comfort's a big demon, bro. Yeah. Yeah. That thing, we need to slay that giant in oh, Jesus' yeah. name. A lot of you are, you're stopping so short from what God wants to do in your life because you prefer your comfort. And this is why when he's speaking, you're not listening because you're cherry picking. So are you listening? Are you taking it to heart? Are you honoring through obeying? God loves you and he has good for you. And if you're not listening, you're going to hurt yourself. If he's calling you to listen, it's because he wants you to be healthy and not sick. Yeah. And that's the purpose of listening. God yeah. wants you to be healthy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Aren't you tired of being sick? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Like, aren't you tired of the same, same miserable patterns yes. that you go to sleep at night and maybe once in a while in a couple of months, it hits you that you have that pattern and you're mm-hmm. tired of it. Yeah. You're exhausted spiritually. You're exhausted mentally. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it all boils down to one question. It all boils down to this one question. Are you listening? Mm-hmm. Or are you just hearing? Because right now, all of us are hearing yeah. the word of God. Yes. Yeah. But what makes the difference is that after you turn this TV off, that you listen. Yes. Yeah. All right. Now comes the hard part. Mm-hmm. Verse three. The part I was dreading the most. <laughs> it's, 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 a, it's an interesting thing to preach this in a liberal secular city. Mm-hmm. Verse three. This is not popular, but whatever. Here we go. You ready? Yes. Yeah. All right, let's buckle up, okay? Uh-huh. Come on. Toughness. Let's go. Yeah. We can do this. Yeah. <laughs> Help me. <laughs> Behold, I will rebuke your offspring and spread dung on your faces. Oh, the dung of your offerings, and you shall be taken away with it. Oh, my God. Wow. wow. 
now that is strong language. Yeah. Yeah. And this is where all of you that want to be preachers, this is where your desire to be a preacher dies. <laughs> <laughs> Back in the day, they would sacrifice the animals and all the dung and the insides of the animal were required to be burnt and they had to be burnt outside of town mm -hmm. because they were considered unclean and yeah. defiled. Yeah. Yeah. So any of you that go fishing, you know that once you catch the fish, you don't eat the fish. Yeah, that's right. You have to cut it, gut it, clean it. Yes. Mm. Yeah, true. This was the same principle with the sacrifices that needed to be offered to God. Mm. Say offered to God. Offered to God. But bruh, what happens when the clean and pure sacrifices you should be offering to God are switched with the dung and the dirty insides? Mm. That's what was happening. Instead of offering clean and pure worship, they were offering him holy dung. Oh. <laughs> so here's what God is saying to them. If you keep spreading that on my face, would you like it if we reversed roles and I wiped it on yours? Oh. The truth is, we sometimes spread on God's face what we would never like someone wiping on ours. Oh, wow. oh my gosh. Wow. 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 And I'll leave that to your interpretation. Yeah. What kind of worship are you offering the Lord? Yeah. Because remember, this is a continuation of our first conversation in chapter one, yeah. 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 where they were offering him lame, sick, crippled animals. It was not pure worship. Yeah. Mm. The things that we give to God we would hate it if our girlfriend did to us. Wow. The things that we offer to God, we would hate it if our boyfriend offered to us. Yeah. Yeah. The attitudes that we sometimes come to church um, or church online or our prayer moment or our worship moment, the attitudes that we come into our worship moments towards God, we would hate it if our father or mother did to us. That's true. Mm. Yeah. Just think about it. If you're married to your spouse and because they had a bad day at work, every single day for three years, they came and took it all out on you. Would you like that? No. Mm -hmm. But see, when we come into our church time, if we come, if we had a bad day, it's so interesting that our bad day determines what we give them. Mm -hmm. And so God is saying, what if what you've been giving to me these past three years what if everything that you've been giving to me this past 2020, mm -hmm. would you like it if we reversed roles and I gave that to you? Oh, wow. Like, answer that question sincerely, guys. Okay, okay, okay. Listen, listen, listen to me, okay? Answer this question sincerely and pay attention to the question. Yeah. Consider everything. Consider everything that you've offered to God in year 2020. Mm. Wow. Consider it. Consider it. Go back to it. Think about it. If God reversed roles and offered what you gave him, mm. would you like it? Mm. Wow. Wow. What if God took it out on you and only made it rain at your house? <laughs> Everywhere else in beautiful British Columbia, <laughs> rain and shining. And then your house, one fat, heavy cloud. And then anytime that you walked out of the house, that cloud follows you. No matter what you do, it's just following you. You get on a bus, it's right on top of the bus. <laughs> You get a new car, right on top of your vehicle. You go to like a restaurant right over, just waiting for you to step out of the restaurant so that it could pour on you. Would you like that? No, of course not. God is saying, what are you giving to me? Because wow. what you're giving to me is dung. Wow. Yeah. And I'm sure that you would hate it if I gave you dung. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The other problem was that the leadership was teaching God's children dung. It was garbage. The leadership of his church was teaching God's children dung. Mm -hmm. It was passive teaching. It was incomplete teaching. Mm -hmm. yeah. The leaders weren't teaching truth because it was possible that teaching the truth had possibly become difficult because maybe of culture opinion. Wow. And so the leadership settled with false teaching that was erroneous and incomplete. Mm -hmm. As a result, God's people were getting sick. So there was another problem. Not only were the people offering God dung, but the leaders were offering the people under the care dung. Mm. They were not teaching truth. They were not caring. They were passive. Yeah. Mm. 
They were teaching incomplete. They were not invested. They were not present. They were absent. They were not correcting, loving, caring. They were not doing any, they were not investing in the people. And as a result of that, the people were getting spiritually sick. Yeah. So leadership of Crape Church, and if you're a leader from somewhere else, I pray that you, I may have the opportunity to speak into your life. How are the people under your care? Yeah. Yeah. Are they dying spiritually? Mm-hmm. Are they sick? Because mm-hmm. God right now is speaking to you and he's saying, if you're a leader in my house, it's not okay for me for you to give dung. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You must be a loving leader. And the problem was this. It was confusing because the people teaching, they outwardly looked good and they sounded awesome. Mm. But their content was dung. Mm. And that's because sometimes the most unhealthiest food comes in the best packaging. Wow. 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 Hey. Is that true? You, you go, you, 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 you're like out, right? And you go to like uh, 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 the supermarket yeah. and you look at carrots, <laughs> but you look at the Twix bar. Which one looks more exciting? <laughs> you go to the candy aisle, it's bright. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's beautifully designed. Yeah. Everything that's poisonous because it's all sugar, right? Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. But then you go to the vegetable section, freaking boring as hell, man. Yeah. Like, it's all natural. I get that. But sometimes all natural doesn't appeal to the eye. Yeah. <laughs> but the principle is, it's not about the packaging. Mm-hmm. Like, I really care about our packaging at Crip Church. Yes. Like, a lot of pastors sometimes, or a lot of leaders from other churches may look at us. And they give me calls and they go, man, your social media is amazing. Like, how do you guys do that? And um, I tell them, um, by the grace of God, his wisdom is creativity and, uh, and a lot of hard work, right? Yeah. We're, we're dedicated, we're commitment, covenant. Yes. Mm-hmm. Right. And I've also heard the other side of the story where a few pastors sometimes go, um, or ch- church leaders go, you know, Crave Church is all about their look. Mm-hmm. And I, I learned something very powerful from a very, very you know, amazing leader uh, that has a global voice. And he he said something very powerful. He said, sometimes people, it's not that they don't want what you have to offer them. And it's not that what you have for them isn't good. Mm -hmm. You have substance. But sometimes people can't get past the sloppy packaging to get to your substance. And so I've, I've been keen on two things in our church. And for all of you that are doubting this, that's why we're having this verse-by-verse verse teaching, yeah. which is called expository teaching. Yeah. Yeah. I've been very, very adamant that we must have good packaging, but we also must have substance. Yes. That's, right. That's, right. that's why we have great artistic ideas to film church online. We like to switch it up a little bit so that it's appealing to your eye. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We like to come up with creative titles because creativity is part of God since God is creator. That's right. We like to you know, select the best types of fonts that we can mm-hmm. and just become very creative because we want to be like our father. God, Father God, was a very creative being, is a very creative being. Just go look at how he actually spoke about the details of the Temple of Solomon. He was very specific. Yeah. But one thing that I've also understood is that you can have great packaging But if you have no substance, it's all in vain. Literally, all in vain. Mm -hmm. But you can also have good substance, and this is even more possible than having good packaging. It's more possible to have good substance and no packaging. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we want to be able to make it palatable for people that are not in the house of God Mm -hmm. or that are not following Jesus to give it a shot. And so we've decided that we want to have substance. And we want to feed the people of God. Yeah. We want to care for them. Tell them the truth. This series is not an easy series for me to preach, to be honest, specifically during the season that we're in in our world and the political uh, climate. It's mm-hmm. not an easy one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I've understood that we must be a church with substance. We're not going to be some shallow church that looks really good on the outside, but has nothing in the inside yeah. like a pretty body without any brains have you ever seen that before 
I refuse to be that type of bride to our Lord Jesus Christ. So we have substance where we teach the word of God. We say things that may be difficult to swallow, but we're also caring for the packaging. We're caring for the packaging, but we're also caring for the substance. The problem with a lot of the leaders in Malachi's day was that they only cared about the outside. They looked fine, but they were not caring for the inside. Mm -hmm. The people were getting sick. As a leader, as someone that has people under your care, an older brother, a teacher, a parent, how are the people? What's their condition? Mm -hmm. What is the condition of the people that are supposed to be under you? Mm -hmm. God takes this very seriously. And it was confusing for the people because outwardly they looked awesome. They sounded great, but the content was none. And that's because sometimes, like I said, the most unhealthiest foods come in the best packages, but God doesn't look at the packaging. God looks at the heart. And unfortunately what he was seeing in the priests, in the leadership of Malachi was an absence of love care and correction and instead he found corruption so verse 4 says so shall you know that I have sent this command to you that my covenant with Levi may stand says the Lord of hosts Levi was the first priest and God made a covenant with him and what God is saying right here is saying I want to be faithful to that covenant Mm -hmm. I want that covenant to stand God is saying to you today I've given you blessings And I want those blessings to stand, but you have to learn to listen. And this is why he guides and corrects us when we're wrong. Verse five, my covenant with him, who's him? Who's him? Levi, Levi, Levi. 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 Say Levi, Levi. Levi. Right? My covenant with? Levi. With him. It was one of life and peace. Mm -hmm. How many of you want peace? Yes. Yes. How many of you still want to live? Good. (laughs) And I gave them to him. What did he give to him? Who's him? And his covenant was of what? Love. Life. Life. And? Peace. See that? Mm -hmm. Peace. (laughs) And then God says, and I gave that to him. Mm -hmm. I gave Levi life and peace. peace. It was a covenant of fear and he feared me he stood in awe of my name verse 6 true instruction was in his mouth and no wrong was found on his lips he walked with me in peace and uprightness and he turned many from iniquity so if you didn't catch that Levi was a true leader that feared and honored God And as a result of that, he never taught falsely. He never sugarcoated things that didn't help anyone, Mm -hmm. thus turning many people from iniquity. In other words, sin. Levi was a guy that feared the Lord. He would preach the truth. He would not sugarcoat. He was not afraid to confront sin in people's lives. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes we don't tell the truth to people because we're afraid of what they're going to think about us. Mm -hmm. We're like, what what if we put tension in the relationship? What if they're soul? And so because he feared the Lord, he taught the truth. Many turned from sin. God honored his covenant. I urge all of you to love those who are bold enough to tell you the truth. Because they tell you the truth simply out of love. Don't punish those who speak the truth that is uncomfortable to you. Because they genuinely love you. Some of you have a bad habit of punishing those that love you. Mm-hmm. And you reward enemies that kiss you. Wow. wow. Look what Proverbs 27, 6 says. Faithful are the wounds of a friend who corrects out of love and concern. Yeah. Yeah. But the kisses of an enemy are deceitful because they serve a hidden agenda. Mm-hmm. Isn't that amazing? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? We must learn to love truth. We must learn to love those that speak truth. Those that can get in your face and be like, brah, you're wrong, man. Mm -hmm. Those that can say, stop it. Those that can say, start it. Mm -hmm. 
Those that can say, hey, you're getting things twisted. You're being led by your feelings and your emotions, not by reason and wisdom or the word of God. Those that say, hey, you decided to take a Sabbath, you got to rest and you can't take the opportunity. Mm. Hey, I know that you really like him. I know that you really like her, but this person's not for you. Are you willing to listen? Wow. Verse seven now in Malachi two, for the lips of a priest should guard knowledge. For the lips of a priest should guard knowledge. For the lips of a priest should guard knowledge. For the lips of a priest, the lips of a leader should guard knowledge. Now listen to this part. And people should seek instruction from his mouth. Mm. So it's two responsibilities. Leaders must guard knowledge, yes. truth, yes. the word of God. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the people should be hungry to seek it. Mm. Wow. This ties with Proverbs where we're told to love truth, even if it wounds us, instead of taking what we want to hear. Yeah. In other words, we need to be teachable. Amen. Yes. Yeah. We must learn to be receptive. Amen. Yes. Yes. And being teachable in an era where we're the ones that want to always be teaching oh. is quite an interesting challenge. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Your leaders lead you and direct you in a specific way. But are you a cherry picker? Oof. Where you only obey when it's convenient and comfortable to you. Mm. Wow. But the moment they confront an area that is not comfortable for you, what do you do? Do you pick up the phone and start calling all your friends and letting them oh. know? Oh. I really disagree with the leadership. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you disagree with the leadership? Yeah. Because it's not conforming to your desire. Mm. Instead, it's conforming to the word of God. Instead, it's conforming to truth. Instead, it's conforming to wisdom. And since wisdom is not your preference, now you're angry, upset, and you're punishing those that love you. Wow. My parents have always taught me, love truth, even if it goes against you. My dad always told me, love truth, even if it goes against the people that you love the most. If this is what my dad used to teach me. If truth goes against what I'm telling you, and truth goes against what your mother's saying, pick truth, not the people that you love. Right. Yes. Now, you don't throw your parents under the bus. Yes. And you don't go, hey, you're liars, and yeah, I'm picking truth. And then you throw them under the bus in front of a crowd. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Of course not. That would be foolish. My dad always taught me that too, that we never throw people under the bus, especially if they're our people, yes. yeah. our family. My yeah. dad always taught me that. My mother always taught me that. My parents always taught me, never fight with your sister in public. Mm -hmm. If she did something wrong, you talk to her at home in private, mm -hmm. and that's where the correction should happen. Yeah. Yeah. But isn't that interesting? That the moment that someone in our church, in a city group, in our leadership, mm -hmm. if they don't like what the person that is in authority over their life says, the first thing they actually go do is they go talk to someone outside of the family, mm -hmm. and they throw them under the bus. Mm -hmm. wow. They start calling someone and be like, hey, I know that you don't come to our church, but I just want to let you know that my leader is doing this and this and that. And I don't agree with it. What do you think? No. Really? At least give your leader the shot to clarify. Yeah. At least give, at least talk so that you can give yourself an opportunity to listen. That's right. Yes. Because you may be really wrong. Mm -hmm. That's true. And you have to learn to love truth, even if it goes against you. And if you're not happy or satisfied or not clear, Go talk yeah. to the right people right. and ask for clarity and give yourself an opportunity to, say it with me, listen. listen. So we need to be teachable. Yes. We must be receptive. Yeah. Let's keep reading verse 7. For he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. Mm -hmm. It's talking about the leadership. But you have turned... Aside from the way, so take note, turned, you've turned. You have caused many to stumble by, watch this, your instruction. So you've turned and now you're speaking your instruction. You have corrupted the covenant of Levi, says the Lord of hosts. 
And so I make you despised and debased for all the people in as much as you do not keep my ways, but show partiality in your instruction. So what God is saying is, you started speaking your instruction, not mine. Your ideas, not mine. Your thoughts, not mine. Your word, not mine. You corrupted my word and you didn't keep it. You changed my message. And here's what I want you to understand, that we're messengers, but messengers are not editors. If you're a messenger, you're not in charge of editing. Meaning, if it doesn't fit your paradigm or your preference, it doesn't mean that you take away or you add on to it. We're yes. not allowed yes. to add on to what God has spoken. Yes. We're yes. definitely not allowed to take away what he has spoken yes. either. That's right. That's right. And a lot of us, what do we want to do? We want to accommodate to society. We want to accommodate to culture. Mm. Yeah. And as leaders, we speak things that accommodate to culture, but we take away from what God is saying. And God is like, I never called you to be my editor. I called you to be my messenger. Because I know what I wrote and I know why I wrote it. And I know that if you spoke what I wrote, it would help the people. The people would be healthy and not sick. But because you took away and you edited instead of just messaging. Now my people are sick. Now my church is far. Now my people don't worship me. Now my people don't understand the fear of the Lord. Now people don't know what honor means. Therefore, they do not know how to listen. Honor thy word. How would you feel if you wrote a book and then you took it to your publisher and then they're like, here we go. We revise it. <laughs> they didn't revise it. They edited the whole thing out. <laughs> and worse, if it's your story about your life, wouldn't you get upset? Yeah. yeah. Do you know how many times God is looking at his priests now, which is the leadership? They're editing his entire story. Like some people saying that God is a loving God and there's no such thing as hell. God's like, really? That's what I actually sent my son to die for. Wow. That's actually the main reason why he went to die. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God's a God of love. He will never send anyone to hell. And he actually never even created hell. Hell is not real. It's just a figment of our imagination to control and manipulate people. Really? Hmm. Where'd you get that from? What verse is that? Yeah. Verse of editing, chapter 15, verse 17. Is that where you got that from? Because I haven't read it in the Bible. Yeah. What's the problem with us? The problem is we've chosen to become editors. And we refuse to be messengers. Wow. As Jesus followers who fear God, we are to be message deliverers, not message editors. God already wrote it all. And he knows his story. And he knows his story better than you and me. We can't change the message he wants us to deliver in order to fit society, culture, or people's preferences. This is dishonorable to God because God takes his word seriously. All right. What does this mean? This also means... That when God speaks to you, you can't edit his instruction to match your preference. This is dishonorable. In other words, editing doesn't only apply to what we must speak to others. It applies to what we must receive as well. So here's the last question. What has God been saying to you? What has God been saying to you? Are you hearing? Or are you listening? Are you taking it to heart? Or are you hardening your heart? There are instructions that God is giving you, and I know they're difficult. Trust me. I know that some of the things that God sometimes speaks into our lives are not the easiest. But you can't choose to be distracted, to rationalize, to ignore, or to think that you're the exception and cherry pick what's easy for you and leave out what's hard. Because if this is you, you're not honoring thy word. You're dishonoring God. And our culture says, wait wait a minute, how is that dishonoring God? Like, shouldn't God like give us free will? Yes. And your free will in this moment is choosing to dishonor God because God takes his word seriously and he's saying, I want you to. I want you to do or I want you to stop. I don't know what God is speaking to you, but you do. And the question in this whole entire section of Malachi chapter 2, verses 1 to 9 is, are you listening? Are you taking it to heart? And are you obeying?